Um, but looking ahead to it, Cass, with you then, Wales, Switzerland. Um, when you look back to 2016, I know the former Wales captain, um, Ashley Williams, has been speaking about it. And he mm. said, went to France. We, 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 this is what he had to say. I thought it was quite interesting. He said, we went to France to have a good time just to enjoy our si- ourselves and experience something new. And that they never could have imagined what mm. they achieved and by g- simply even just getting out of the group and then making it to the semi-finals. When you are in a team that I guess that reaches something for the very first time, you do have that sort of playing without, f- playing with freedom, mm. you know, the shackles are off, which in a way means this time around it's a bit of a different approach because they still have some of those players still in that squad. Yeah, and it reminds me of Ireland 88 and 90 and yeah. probably 94 as well. Just loving it. Enjoying the people you're around as well is a big plus. I think the Welsh squad have definitely got that. Interesting reading in the paper this morning with Gareth Bale. He's talking and he was, you know, thinking in November that he was trying to peak for the summertime with his conditioning Mm -hmm. training. (laughs) I'm not sure Tottenham would be so happy with that. But, um, you know, trying to peak for this time. But which, as you say, Tottenham fans forgive us, but you can understand that that might have been his number one focus, really, wanting to make sure he was playing as regularly as he could play, Mm. as it turned out for Spurs in that loan deal, with the aim of making sure he's as fit as he could be for Wales for the Euros. I think that's definitely was his reasoning. Mm. And it would have been interesting if there was no tournament, what... Uh, Gareth would have done would he have gone to Tottenham on loan would he have sat it out again at Real Madrid luckily there's a, there is a tournament and he, need, he needed to play football mm. and with that we're going to see a player who probably would look at and look he's he, a huge say to have at a tournament I think that's still in his ambitions and they're set up I think there's been a lot of people who think Wales okay what they did in the Euros in, in 16 was pretty sensational but if you look at their squad, they've got a lot of attacking options that are really likely to get a goal. Harry Wilson can get a goal. David Brooks can get a goal. I would say Ramsey from midfield can get a goal. Bow, likewise. Um, you know, Kiefer Moore at, at Cardiff, he could do, certainly lead the line brilliantly. Daniel James. Mm. There's goals in this team. So I, I expect them to... OK, it's a big ask to say get to the semi-finals or quarter-finals. It's still a big ask. They're going to have to play really, really well. But I... I do like a lot of the Welsh team. They only scored 10 in eight games in their qualifiers, um, finishing second to Croatia. How big an issue is that for them? Well, the qualifying campaign of 16 was about Bell getting goals regularly. That hasn't been the case this time around. He's found Mm -hmm. it trickier because he didn't play enough and um, he didn't look fit in some of the games. So I expect more in this tournament than we've seen in their qualifying campaign. I think they'll show a lot more ambition. I think deep down, they'll be confident they can do something a little bit special. You know, certainly get out of their group. I wouldn't, you know, after watching the Turkey-Italy game last yeah. night, I wouldn't be surprised if Wales can get that second spot. It's interesting when you're, again, so if you were, when you were the Republic of Ireland, are you watching the other group games? Yeah, of course. No. Yeah. We watch everything. Yeah. Yeah, and I can remember... And I think England found out, not at their peril because they beat them, but I can remember Jack Charlton saying, wow, Cameroon, we don't want to draw them. (laughs) If we go deep, we don't want Cameroon. England got them. Mm. And we all knew it would be a really tight game against Cameroon. Uh, And they proved that they were a really tough team for England to play. You know, you you play certain teams, you know that they offer different threats and they can be a handful. And like we're going to see, I'm not sure. The teams watching last night, watching Italy, they all think they're a really good side. As in a team, their work ethic, their desire. It was all there on show last night. So anyone who comes across Italy further down in the tournament, because I'm pretty sure, not because they just won 3-0 last night, but their performance justified people thinking differently about them because I felt uh, they were a better team than what I thought they were. That, you know, And I'd watched, watched them be, uh, prior to tonight, uh, last night. What about Switzerland then? How much of a threat will they be for Wales? Today? Don't know. Don't know at the moment. I, you know, they've got a number of players that play football over here, um, and certainly a number of them, sort of late twenties, early thirties. I, I'm not sure about Switzerland. I think Wales are going to have to get a big result against them. Um, so I, we'll know a lot more by today. Um, I'm, I. Don't, I think you've got to beat... If you're going to have any chance of going further in the tournament, you're going to have to get one over Switzerland because they'll be the team vying for that second spot. 
They've been a team that sort of hovered around in the top 10 for, for quite a while in the world rankings. They, they've, just, they've just dropped out of it. I think they're 13th. I was going to say, I don't really know why. They've never really done that well. well. They've had they, a lot of qualifying. Well, do you know what it is? They, they talked about how they played the rankings game, didn't they? They played a lot of matches against lesser opposition, yeah. which meant they got the, the required points to get themselves into yeah. the top 10. And uh, <laughs> hey, it worked for them at the time. And it meant that they got favourable draws here, there and everywhere. Um, but they're unbeaten in 2021. They've beaten Bulgaria. That's not that hard, really, unfortunately, being half Bulgarian. Uh, <laughs> Lithuania, Finland, USA and Liechtenstein. So they've won five of the sp- uh, on the spin. So they're coming into this with a, with a bit of good form, which is obviously what you need in any side coming into to a, a tournament. Okay. So how many of them would you expect the, expected them to win? Because <laughs> I'm not sure. Finland might have got I was about own. to say, maybe USA. USA. Mm, um, yeah, so... Yeah, no, you're quite right. Um, if I was a Welsh player, I certainly wouldn't be afraid of Switzerland. You know, they're, they've had some good teams over the years. I wouldn't put this one up there with the very best. You know, number of players playing the Premier League, Shaka, Shakiri, not been in Liverpool, Fabian Charles in there, some of the goalkeeper, OK, don't play in England, but he's a decent keeper. Um, I think Wales have got a great opportunity today. Interesting as well, when you're talking about a, a Wales side, and, and I hope Wales fans will forgive me for saying this, but there is obviously the elite in the Euros right now. So mm-hmm. we're obviously talking your France and Portugal. You could put England in there and obviously some other teams as well. And then you've got the lesser known teams. And, and that's the beauty of this competition because there is expanded Euros, isn't it, as it was from 2016 because it wanted to give more nations yeah. the chance of qualifying for this tournament. How important then is a team togetherness and, and spirit when perhaps your team, I know you've pointed out they've got some good attacking talent, but when you're a team perhaps not reliant on your world beaters? Well, your world beaters are really important. You know, Gareth Bale proved that by what he did in the qualifying campaign in the previous tournament. Um, but, you, but, but they don't have, you know, a plethora of those players. No, you know? no, they, they haven't, but they've got a lot of good players. No, I mean, they have, absolutely. If you look at Chris Basham, I think he, I saw a lot of Chris at Sheffield United. I think he's a really good player. Uh, ben Davis at Tottenham is pretty solid. Um, Ampadu has moved mm-hmm. on and, mm-hmm. and had a decent enough season at Sheffield. You know, they've got a lot of good players in all different positions. So I don't, I don't necessarily think Wales are a a side that need to go there and think, oh, you've got to be brave. When you go to tournament football, you've got to be prepared to come up and rub shoulders with the best teams and not play um, with a fear of hanging on in a game. Turkey did that last night. And if you go there, you'll get punished by the... Because all these teams will have a player, at the, at the top end will have a player that can turn a game in a moment. So you can't rely on... You know, just just keep. Let's dig in deep. Let's try and stifle them, negate everything they do. Because one of them must stick the ball in the top corner. That's what top footballers do at international level, and you do it see in top club sides as well, regularly in the Champions League. Mm. That uh, in a moment you could be out of a competition. Were Turkey overall? Do you think? A uh, little bit. I, I would say, Natalie. What really surprised me, they actually looked a bit off the pace physically, mm. which really surprised me. Now, look, we've had a strange year. Lots of things have happened in this pandemic and football's been disruption with club level and certain players have played a lot more football. You know, we've seen with England, the Champions League players had to rest up for Gareth and couldn't play in the the game against Romania. Um, So I just thought they weren't at the races physically either. It weren't that they didn't play particularly well, but they looked way off the pace compared to the Italians. Mm. For you then, do you see it as though Italy will win this group... And then, as we know, the best two third place teams will also go through. But not wanting to rely on that, it's it's Italy that will go through as group winners, and then Wales having a massive opportunity to finish as runners up to then make it yeah, through I do the now. knockout stage. I yeah? think they've got a fantastic chance of being runners up. And look, Italy showed that if they're on, they're going to be a really tough side to play against. And uh, but Wales, I think, will be delighted by last night's result because they could go into the Italian game and think a draw. If they win today and a draw, it might be enough to get them through. So, And so how do you see Wales-Switzerland panning out? i actually more optimistic than I was uh, before the start of the tournament. I think Wales will beat them today. And I expect some big performances. Like I said, Bell's prepared himself a long time. The reason why he left Madrid was for this tournament, in my opinion. Mm. And I expect Gareth to show, and like I said earlier in the show, 
he's the most successful player that's played in another country and done so well and won so much. And he's still 31. He's not 34, 35, 36. He's 31 years old. Yeah. And if he's got himself in a great condition, expect Gareth Bale to have a big tournament. 